Nobel Prize in Physics <coughs> is about the interaction between light and matter. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the 2012 Nobel Prize in Physics to Serge Arroche at Collège de France and the Ecole Normale Supérieure, Paris, France, and David J. Weinland <coughs> at National Institute of Standards and Technology and University of Colorado, Boulder, that was the announcement earlier today that an American and a Frenchman shared the Nobel Prize for Physics this year for their study of quantum particles. Well, Kautam Naik has been looking at the work of Serge Haroche and David Weinland. Um, Gautam, um, quantum physics, or mechanics as some people call it, I mean, essentially this is a study of energy and waves at the microscopic level. Pretty deep stuff. Yes, our everyday world uh, comprises of atoms and molecules and everything that's bigger than that. The quantum physics world is everything that's smaller than molecules and atoms. It's a very odd, very strange, very random and uncertain world indeed. And it's for work, very important work in this area, experimental research, that these two Nobelists have been uh, picked out. Okay, so exactly what did they do? I mean, I gather that one of them studied how to isolate photons, that's the light stuff and the other one was learning how to isolate um, ions, which is, I'm not quite sure, you're gonna have to explain what an ion right. is. Well, the idea here is to try and figure out how to isolate and study and measure these particles, these su subatomic particles that make up the quantum world. And they're very hard to do. The reason is they exist for a very short amount of time. They can be in two places at one time. They can be in two states at one time. They can communicate over millions of miles without any connection apparently between them. It's a very, very odd world indeed. So how do you actually find uh, these particles and isolate them in order to study them? That was the challenge that these Nobelists set out to try and solve. Okay, so they have been able to do this in, in, in their own specific ways. What use is this to us? Well, they've already used some of this information and technology to build a very fast clock, a very accurate clock, one that's about 100 times or more precise than the cesium clocks, which are the basis for all our time measuring in the world today. Uh, also, they have done some very basic calculations using this quantum information uh, that could, could be the basis for a quantum computer. A s computer that would be so speedy and fast, do so many calculations, would leave the best supercomputers today in the dust, if it ever can be built. I was just going to say, they haven't been able to actually build this year, that we're still stuck with the old binary systems of computers, which, although seem fast, apparently are just in no way the same sphere that a quantum computer would be. That's right, all our information in a computer today is encoded in digits uh, one and zero, and so I can on and Binary off switch. System, yeah. But a quantum system, because it can have different states and you can have different particles with different states, you could have four, eight, 16 different you know, on-off switches, so to speak, and therefore you could encode a lot more information, you could do a lot more calculations. That's the idea, but here's the rub. When quantum particles, properties interact with our everyday world, they disappear. So if you build a computer and you're using this quantum technology, it may be able to do the calculation, but if it's going to send the result of that number crunching out to the real world, will that disappear? This is an inherent paradox with this whole idea of a quantum computer and they need to resolve it. It's like communicating between one side of the world and the other side. Absolutely. It could be a different world. That's exactly it. Gautam, thank you very much indeed. It's Pleasure. very interesting.